we got a weird spring, right? There's no flow, no runoff, no rain, water's low, water's clear. It's not, we're not experiencing big spring runs yet. We're very early in the process. So I'm just excited to get out and catch some fish today. Welcome back to the small boat tour. We're getting it done. It's a chilly morning. Last video you guys watched, we were on a small river system in central Wisconsin. Now, we're taking the boat to big river system. And I've been down here a few times already. This is an awesome, phenomenal little river rig. And we wanna come out on some big river water and put some walleyes in the John boat. Super excited about today. We're down here on one of the many pools of the Mississippi River. And uh, chilly morning, gonna be beautiful by the end of the day though. We got Mitchell behind the camera and we're in the John boat. It's gonna be a good day, but really wanna kind of showcase some early, er we got a weird spring, right? There's no flow, no runoff, no rain, water's low, water's clear. It's not, we're not experiencing big spring runs yet. We're very early in the process. So I'm just excited to get out and catch some fish today. We're gonna take you guys along for the ride. Hopefully put some walleyes or saugers in the boat and just have a good time breaking down the Mississippi River in the small boat. What a beautiful morning. And it's about 24 degrees out, but it's gonna warm up today, no wind. And uh, we made a, oh, it's bright out. Real bright out today. Well, we made a long run down river. And, uh, you know, a lot of times you think of these spring river runs, it's like, go to the dam, go to the dam, right? That's where everybody's kind of fishing and going. Uh, the hope is that we don't have to go there. In fact, you don't have to go there. There's a lot of areas in a lot of these rivers that'll hold fish um, outside of a dam. So we're essentially gonna go way down river here and probably slowly work our way back up or we'll just kind of see what's going on. But that's kind of the plan. We're hoping to find uh, some pods of fish kind of on some channel edges. That's kind of what I got for you for now. And hopefully, They'll be throttling some plastic. So a lot of these rivers are made up of mostly sand. So it's kind of a lot of side imaging, looking at side imaging, trying to not be in what, something that looks like rough fish and trying to be in something that looks more like walleyes. Stay tuned. Are we on camera, man? Yep. That didn't take too long. Feel like a nice fish too. I mean, just absolutely throttled that tickle shad right off the bat, man. I don't know if we got, oh, he's not too big, but man, did he have the right attitude? That is for sure. And there we go, number one of the day. We'll grab our net here, scoop him on up. And nice walleye to get things going as buddy Jason's driving by. And uh, there we go, man, look at that. Smash that little tickle shad, man. That is what we're talking about right there. And that bait, when the water is low and clear in the Mississippi River, it's called, the color is called lifelike. I'll try to hit it with some sun there. It's kind of like an off-white pearl thing. Man, have I caught a lot of fish on that color in that tickle shad on the river this time of year. But there we go. That is a great walleye to start. And you know, we're dealing with a lot of these conditions where the water is just real low and slow. What that does is a lot of times it spreads fish out a lot in these systems. So we're not really expecting to catch like 100 fish in one spot today. We're anticipating a lot more of that. Here's a couple fish, here's a couple fish. Kind of run around and catch them, especially in these way down river locations. But we'll let that guy go and hopefully put a whole bunch more of them in the boat. See you later, buddy. I was going to give you a more cinematic release, but... Don't want to get the hands too wet when she's this cold out, but we're sitting in nine feet of water. There's kind of a little four foot lip behind us. And uh, a lot of times, if we can find these fish shallow, there will be a higher likelihood to be walleyes a lot of times. So it's always harder to find the fish shallow. You also kind of have a higher big fish potential, I think, if you find fish shallow. But that didn't take too long. So let's catch another one, camera guy. I don't think we got a walleye here. 
Maybe it is, and he just bit it really weird. Oh, it is a nice walleye. Big walleye? That was bizarre. No, it's not a, a big walleye. Man. You guys probably saw that on the initial GoPro bite, but... <laughs> we always joke on when we're jig fishing. The joke's always, he bit it on the way up. That one actually did? Because they never bite it on the way up. <laughs> So sometimes, like, Mitch will say something like, oh, he bit it on the way up. And okay, he, he, let's <laughs> I, I don't say that. <laughs> but this one, this one felt like he literally did bite it on the way up. <laughs> Either that or, like, just the second I engaged the reel, it moved it again. You know, that that's the nice part about fishing a plastic like this is that paddle tail. We got an old Kalen's wrapper in the boat here. But the old paddle tail is just always moving in the current. So... They can literally bite it at any time. It was like the second I engaged the reel to pull in a little bit farther. He bit, he bit, he bit it on the way up. It's on the way up. What's up with that? I like that level of motivation though out of him. He's an angry guy. Yeah, like so let him go. I mean, two beautiful fish right off the bat, man. You know, a lot of times early on these rivers, the goal is trying to stay away from 12 inch sauger because you can get in some of those deeper holes where the bite just kind of turns into 12 inch saugers. We're not super interested in 12 inch saugers, right? camera guy says we need to do better than 12 inch saugers but 10, pound 10 pounders well you got a shot you got a shot we might have to stay until after dark to find one of those rascals that wants to bite up shallow but there we go two fish in the first little spot and really all we did is just come down this little chute here look at side imaging confirm where some fish are and uh if you get too far out of the current what we're seeing is a lot of rough fish we find these little rolls back behind us like we got here where there's some side imaging marks in it in this current those are gonna be your walleyes so there's a few back there right there you rolling yeah. got him all right oh that one absolutely throttled it too Feeling like a nice fish. Feeling like a nice fish. One bite on the way up as well. <laughs> no, this is a standard, standard issue bite here. Oh, we got our first sauger today, Mitchell. Nice one. That is one thing that makes this place. Mitchell's trying to unspot lock me. Yeah, that is one thing that makes this place so cool. Is these super nice saugers. Look at him, man. He was a ways out there. And <laughs> these are like, I mean, this one's probably a 19 incher, dude. I mean, that is basically a world-class sauger a lot of places you're gonna go and they get way bigger than that here even but that is a quality fish absolutely smoked the tickle shad way out there look at that guy man beautiful walleyes right there or saugers as you prefer first one of those of the day and i don't mind saugers that are this size a lot of times you get in those deep community holes in the river and you know it's all like nine to 14 inch saugers we ain't after those but ones this size they fight hard they smash swim baits We'll catch those all day long. That is just a beautiful one right there, man. <laughs> and they get so fat and sassy in the spring. I love those saugers that are about 22 inches long and just fat as can be. Back down, little buddy. Oh, he's stunned. Get back in your little current seam. That's cool, you can actually see him right there in the landscape mode. But um, yeah, there we go. I mean, we're off to a pretty decent start, would you say, cameraman? I think so, I think it's a uh exceeding my expectations oh come on you know down here we're in the river at boat we're catching fish son but that one i cannot tell you guys how many times i fished down here with that setup all day day after day and just caught a lot of fish it's 2.8 or 3.8 inch we'll, we'll link it down below kalen's tickle shad 3a sounds jig if we're fishing a little bit shallower a little bit later current i'd go down to a quarter but they're thumping the three ace so we'll take it man we will take it how's everything looking on your end camera guy is it crispy? He's looking. He's looking into just the most insane fireball you guys have ever seen here. Yeah. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this film because it is a stunning morning down on the river. Now I should say this: the best river fish in the season is not even close to here yet. A lot of times when you start getting that water come up a little bit, it'll be interesting this year to see what happens if we do get a bunch of rain at some point and these rivers kind of you know come up a little bit and these fish really start sucking up and moving towards the bank and things like that but those are the funnest days but i'm having a hell of a time right now mitchell all right well we are putting around looking for some more fish to catch and uh this is kind of what i've been noticing this year the few times i've been on this river system 
just because we don't have a lot of flow there's just not like a ton of fish in one spot so it's a lot of like catch three four here go here catch two go over there catch two and uh basically we're running around just looking for like this one kind of characteristics and i was just thinking we how we're going to describe it but there's a video if you just get on walleye now if you click early spring and if you click river and now it's because the video is going to be right under the location part and we want to find this one right here sand flats this video is basically a cookie cutter of exactly what we're doing today and it kind of goes through a nice walk through on kind of exactly where we're seeing fish finding fish and all that kind of stuff here and it goes into kind of a detailed side imagery look at what we're seeing but it's basically this kind of like undulating sand bottom and how we're just going around looking for fish here and there and then making some pitches at them obviously when we see them but now we're just hoping we see some more of that Now you're rolling. All right, boys. Well, Mitchell was taking a little B-roll. Oh, it's a nice walleye. I was going from one spot to the next here. Oh, big sauger, dude. Really big sauger. And I was like, well, I might as well drag a little Dubuque rig up river, just kind of looking around. And there we go. I think I literally in the last clip was like, you know, they get bigger and they definitely get bigger. Now difference between a sauger and a saw guy does anybody actually know or they just make make stuff up but this is a pretty nice one right here and uh this is i believe just a full-on sauger i mean look at how big this fish is man they don't get a whole lot better than this and basically all i was doing was kind of moved down a little bit did a little casting and just wasn't seeing like a big school of fish so i was like well i'll just drag back into the current and look around just threw on that little brighter color on a dubuque rig you can fish two lines down here per person so you got two different tickle shads on each one but wow dude <laughs> look at that look at that big guy i mean that thing is a big old fatty i'm trying to make them look pretty for you here cameraman i'm doing a terrible job of it aren't i you want me to go back i mean that is a super nice healthy one right there man what is he 21 somewhere right in there Big fatty, beautiful fish, man. And that is world-class saugers right there. I mean, that is <laughs> about as good as it gets. Awesome. All right, let's let her go. That is a big old egg wagon of a sauger right there. What? Egg wagon, that's, that's what you call these big old right. egg-laden females. River fishing in the John boat. It's spring, we're catching fish. I don't know how it gets any better. I mean, you wait all winter for a day like this. And I will say this, after doing it now, there is something special about being out here in my little incognito um, XL John boat. I mean, this thing is kind of, I mean, you don't feel like, there's no point in these systems where you feel like you're outgunned, right? I mean, I'm asking you. Yeah, no, I, I, I was just, just gonna say, I completely agree with you. There's no point where you're like, man, I wish I had the, a really big boat today. I mean, this is like literally all you need to come fish these river systems. So you can get as fancy as you want with it, obviously, but. Well, as long as the wind doesn't pick up, we're good anywhere. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that a John boat's bad for is obviously big, windy stuff, which in these little rivers, you don't really experience that, so. Right, but this thing is incredibly stable. So it it's is. It's not like your standard heavy John boat. This thing is... No. Is this a good point to go... We've been asked so many questions on how you have this thing rigged and stuff like that. I know in the last video I went into a little bit. Is this a good time to kind of talk about that? Yeah, might as well. Go All right. right into it. Well, hang on, let me clean up a little bit. We don't want... Are you rolling right now? Yeah. You know how when someone... Uh, and it's always women that do this. You ever notice that, Mitchell? When, like, you're like, oh, yeah, come over. And then you're, the old lady will be like, no, our house is a disaster. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what you're doing right now. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm like, don't show anyone my boat right now. It's a disaster. But, yeah, but you know, every, everyone, when they're fishing, though. their boat's going to be a disaster. So here's what we got going on. In the back, like we said, there's two graphs right here. 
two Helix 9s. Now, this is all I really need on here. Now, the cool part about XL, and uh, I talked to a guy at a boat landing who has the same boat, actually, but he didn't know what to do for graph mounts, is you get these brackets from XL that fit right in this track system right here. You seeing that good? Yep. So these brackets go right in there, and then you can mount whatever you want. And these things, I mean, if you could take a John boat out in four footers, and uh, which you could, um, these graphs mounts are not moving. So there's not really a great spot to mount the graphs like right here. So keep them on that rail. That's going to keep it a lot easier. Then we obviously got the TKI CNC live pole on here, which fits right into that track as well with a graph mount to keep everything real clean, get it up off the deck and keep everything kind of, you know, out of the way a little bit when I'm fishing. So that's what we got there. All accessory switches down here. And in here, I, this is kind of where I like to put, this is a live well. I kind of use, normally I carry just a whole thing of waters with me, but I also use it as like a garbage. Obviously you can just put your fish in here if you're somebody who's gonna have a little fish right at the end of the day. Now, this boat, which I was a little concerned with because every big boat I have has like five batteries in it. This boat has two batteries in it, both right back here. Um, some obviously some random wiring back here, but two batteries, one for the motor, one for the trolling motor. And that, I was a little concerned with just having that but to be honest with you, having a 55 pound thrust Minn Kota Trova on here, we've fished in some heavy current this year. I've never seen this get below 50% so far. So obviously a 12 mold is more than sufficient for river fishing and fishing this way. And uh, yeah. back we got the Yamaha, obviously Yamaha is super reliable, quiet four stroke. In here, this is where I like to keep the jet boil, some food, um, all my fishing licenses, things like that. I just realized it got wet in here yesterday because I had this, I had this open while uh, it was raining and snowing yesterday. But that's all right. It's a John boat, and that's the nice part about a John boat. Is who cares how sandy it gets, and who cares how wet it gets on the inside, right? Everything's like linexed, or you know, I don't know what you'd call this, this grippy liner. So nothing's like slippery on here. In this compartment right here, on this one over here, Mitchell, under my rods, this is where I keep kind of all my baits. It's actually a gun box, but I'll keep like my rope in here, keep some rain jackets in here, my tackle in here. Um, obviously this boat doesn't have like a ton of storage, but this is a lot more storage than a normal John boat has. So I'll just keep like all my tackle trays in here and things like that, some extra rain gear, all that kind of stuff. And then up under the front flap here, this is where I stow all my life jackets and things like that. And actually the fact that it comes with this, these bags on these kind of like compartments is super handy because it's just all the little options you get to keep, keep stuff a little bit more out of the way. Gas tank's about 11 gallons. You're gonna do a lot of running with a 40 or 50 horsepower John boat and a, with a Yamaha to go through 11 gallons in a day. So I don't really have to worry about that. And uh, it's got a built-in tank, which is absolutely awesome. But there's your little John boat rundown. Don't need to get super complicated to come out to a lot of these rivers and catch fish. At a day and age when everybody's going more electronics, more this, more this, how fancy can we make our boat? I was really looking forward to this year to getting something like this, keeping it simple, and showing you guys how you don't need all that to come out and catch a lot of fish. So um, with that being said, let's catch another one, Mitchell. Nice. You live there, camera guy? Another nice sauger. I mean, we're on them, dude. We're catching them. A few walleyes, a few saugers. I get my new net out. Scoop this guy up here. I'm trying to go around camera guy here. You bit real close to the boat. How's the footage camera guy? It seemed jostled. Huh? It seemed it seemed hectic there. It was. I didn't. And I couldn't get there. For some reason the ca going. camera wasn't on there, but. We're, we're working out this whole film guy, you know, there's a this dynamic here in the boat. We're just trying to make small talk and just get through right now. It takes time, but you know, hopefully you guys are enjoying this little bit more polished up product. I think it adds another dimension too, versus when you just talk to like a blank camera all day, you're like, every time you talk to the camera, you're like, all right, camera, we're doing this. And then we're doing this Or when I'm talking to a camera, it's more like I'm talking to you guys or I'm talking to Mitch, I feel like, which is more like talking to you guys. Beautiful sauger, man. And we're catching some nice fish, aren't we? No complaints about this. And you guys will be able to tell from the crappy GoPro quality footage that that fish just absolutely drilled it, dude. And I feel like sometimes you get those bites where like your whole body is just like really ripped into that one. Those are perfect, man. 
and these rivers are i mean this is where you're at in the spring right there's something special in my heart about coming out to these rivers super early in the spring and feeling a whole bunch of walleye smash and swim baits in the current it's just got a sweet spot in my heart there's places we could go right now and catch way bigger fish and probably way more fish but i love something <laughs> about these river systems that these fish I mean, it's just, it's like I said, it's a sweet spot of my heart. This is how every walleye season is supposed to start by catching a bunch of these river dwelling creatures right here. Let's let them go. These gloves might have to come off because I can't, uh, they're just latching onto me. There we go. See you later, buddy. Back down he goes. Eight feet of water. There are some shallow fish out here, huh? I'm liking that. A lot of these fish in the water is real cold to be in deeper water, but if you can find some in shallow water, I don't know, it's just more fun to me. <laughs> We're on them, son. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Feeling like another real nice fish here. Oh yeah, another nice sauger. You notice those first two we caught walleyes? Now we're a little bit more in the sauger train. And we're still fishing shallow, but I mean, these are nice fish. And we're just uh, kind of fishing our way downstream a little bit. And then I'll kind of drag back up into the current, kind of take a look, see what's around, and catch fish in the process. I mean, it's a pretty simple deal, really. Dragging plastics in these rivers is just one thing that day in, day out in the spring, hard to beat. I had a foolish thought this morning thinking, what, should I go get some minnows? Ended up not buying them, and obviously you don't need them. Sometimes just having them in the boat gives you some confidence, you know? but 100% not necessary. You know, we're still fishing these super cold water temps. And this is just a 18 inch sauger here. Look how he's eating that bait. Half ounce jig and uh, absolutely smoked it. I just missed another bite a second ago. And uh, just kind of switching out a couple different colors. That one, similar to the one we've been catching all the fish on, that one's got that little brighter tail section on it. There we go, man. This is a fun day. I'm having a good time. It's absolutely beautiful outside. It's spring, river fishing, John boat, whaling on the plastics. This is a good time. And soon it's going to be lunchtime, Mitchell, which I got a special treat in store for you. <laughs> well, I mean, you could have some. I did buy some for you. Got to make sure I give you that mandated 30 minutes right. a day, you know. <sighs> Gosh, dude, is there a better feeling in walleye fishing than when you're just dragging that thing? And your line just kind of flexes up a little bit. No longer get to experience that. Well, you never got really got many bites anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we got big, big river, big river Mitch behind the lens. Right. The guy just for some reason in these river systems just crushes it. Crushes it, yeah. That's the word I was gonna use too. But Dubuque again, super simple. It's funny how Dubuque rigging is like one of those niche things. It's like pulling flies. Like on this river, you never see guys pulling flies on this river stretch. But on some rivers, you never see guys Dubuque rigging. And uh, it's a super simple way to fish. I just filmed a whole nother, um, I, I filmed a Dubuque Creek section for walleye now, probably like three years ago, and really kind of want to do like a refresher on some of the things that I've learned and I experienced. But it is so deadly. If you want to find that one, that would be under early spring, river, and um, presentation. So I filmed probably like a 10 minute thing. It was probably way too long, but I wanted to make sure I had everything in it. So super simple way to fish and it obviously catches an absolute pile of fish. All right, folks at home. All right, folks at home. Apparently, Jet Boil Minute with Tom is a weekly part of our uh, uh, day in the river in the Jumbo. But you know, basically, we're just dealing with what we had to deal with at the quick trip last night. So we got some Hormel chili, which you know by itself maybe not the best option, but we got Fritos to put in there. And I couldn't find shredded cheese last night. I really wanted to wine and dine old Mitchell out here. So I even got some cheese curds. I and mean, you can eat those plain. Or I was thinking even put them in the chili possibly. 
So that's, that's kind of what we got going. But the best part about the Little John is you can just beach her wherever you want. You can run in the back channels, beach this thing up on no man's land back here. I'm good to go. Suicide of deliciousness. Yep, it's about to happen. Now, it ain't Granny's homemade chili unless it sticks to the spoon like that. That's what you want. Good looking stuff, <laughs> Some good looking stuff. All right, it absolutely got out of hand back here. We got the chili Fritos in the chili. We got the cheese curds. First bite. Melted it all up in there. Oh, look at that. Oh, there, the cheese curds. Is that actually good? The cheese grits are clutch. This is exactly what I wanted. But it is hotter than I'll get out right now. So we could probably talk about the net, huh, Mitchell? Yeah. Finally. The day is finally here. All the questions. What net are you using? What net would you recommend? I need a new net. What should I get? Holy cow, did it take us a while? A year and a half. We finally have the finished product. All last year. I was testing out different nets, different prototypes, and we finally made, we, it's called the Kalen's Landing Net. We'll call it the Tom Boyle Net, right? Because this was kind of a long project, which took us a while to get everything right. Now, the biggest complaint I always had about nets is that they were heavy. And uh, what we did on this one, super cool. Carbon fiber handle. This net weighs, weighs 1.86 pounds. It literally weighs under two pounds. That is crazy. So when you have a big fish on in one hand, you're fishing by yourself, net in the other hand, it's real quick and nimble to net a fish, right? Also, has a with a quarter turn on the handle, it'll stretch out to eight feet long. And you can see, hold it out, this net doesn't like flex a bunch. It doesn't have any flex in it, really, at, uh, even when it's stretched way out. So that's super cool. The biggest thing I wanted was something that's quick and nimble. We'll link this net down in the description where you guys can grab it from. Honestly, my favorite walleye net I've probably ever fished with. The bag is kind of that perfect height where it's not too deep. It auto opens, it doesn't just sag way down. There's nothing worse than a net or when your buddy's like, hey, grab your fish out of it. And it feels like you're grabbing like way down like this. The best part's how light it is. It's got kind of this thinner hexagonal shaped um, like netting material, which is super friendly to the fish. It's rubberized so it doesn't tangle bad with your hooks or anything like that. And this net is, well, we tested it all last year. Put hundreds of walleyes in it. Big pike, the bycatch, musky, catfish, whatever you might have. Very impressed with this net. So this is the one I'll be using all the time going forward in the future. My other favorite thing about it, if you're a fiberglass boat guy, a lot of the other nets had a metal piece right here. This was all like rigid, sharp metal. So when you net a fish and you put it on the side of your boat, leaving the fish in the water, it always scuff your boat up. This one is all a super heavy duty plastic. So it does not uh, scratch up any kind of boat or anything like that. So I was super happy about that. So get them while they last. These things are already going like hotcakes, but if you're in the market or want to do landing net this year, this is the one, the Kalen's landing net. We'll link it down below. But for now, Mitchell, I'm gonna enjoy my chili if it cooled down at all. Oh, boys. Just getting done with lunch, and we got another fishy on. I, mean, I don't know what else to say. There's no boats around, Mitchell. We're catching fish like crazy. We go to got here, walleye or sauger. It's like a nice sauger. I mean, a lot of these like similar cookie cutter sized fish, but hey man, for coming to a different location, breaking it down in the old small boat, how are you gonna beat that? So it's been a perfect day. And it's only, what time is it right now? It's noon. <laughs> how are you gonna beat that? Camera guy's happy, his hands aren't cold. The fish are happy and they're biting. Absolutely smoking a bunch of these plastics especially those tickle sads. Like I said, we'll link down those down below. That bait will work everywhere you go in the spring. Beautiful fish, man. That is what I'm talking about right there. I don't really know how you could be having a better time, to be honest with you. Mitch has lately been mad at how I've been holding the fish for some reason. I just did it again, too. I do this weird thing that he doesn't like, where I'm like showing it off, and then I'm like this, and I'm like, well, yeah, look at that thing. He's pretty cool, because I want to look at him. Look at that. Beautiful soccer right there. 
Some walleyes, some saugers, and a good time. Let's let that guy go. Dude, the way they're hitting that thing, it's just whack. I mean, they are absolutely smoking it. See you later, buddy. Back down in the current he goes. It's as good as it gets. Boom. Gosh, are we having a good time, dude. This one's not gonna be super big. He's doing real tight little head shakes, but I mean, hey, if you're on the hunt, oh, we got a walleye, Mitchell. We got a walleye again. I mean, he's a nice 16 inch pudgy keeper size fish. There we go, smallest one of the day. But hey, have not been fishing for super long and we're beating them up on the old tickle sheds. Jigs, plastics, river fishing. Doesn't get much more simple than that, honestly. And this is such a fun time to come out to these rivers and do this this time of year. And like you can see, you guys haven't seen much for boats around us all day. There was one guy for a little bit. You know, we don't have to go run way up to the dam just to catch a whole bunch of nice fish. And I'm glad we got it done in the jumbo today. It feels good. There's another nice little guy right there. He'd be a tasty one, but he's getting a free pass. See you later, buddy. And, uh... <clears throat> Walleyes of any size in these rivers. I mean, they're used to like eating bigger stuff. I have no problem eating some of these three inch um, paddle tails, that is for sure. Back down we go, back to get another one. This is a good time. It's warming up now, it's super. Mitch, you know it's warm when even Mitch isn't complaining about the cold. Is that true? I mean, that's true. <laughs> I just never properly dressed. I'm properly dressed today. Yeah, I rented you out my, Gear. what was the rental agreement on those bibs? Five bucks an hour? Yeah, something like that. All right. I'll pay you next month. <laughs> Two installments of five dollars <laughs> an hour. All right, boys and girls, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Only fished a real short while, half day of fishing. Caught enough, plenty enough fish for a video, would you say, camera guy? I think so. Beautiful day on the river, breaking in the John boat. Where are we going next with this thing? I don't know, some small little rat hole somewhere, I suppose we could float this thing and find a walleye to catch. But I'm actually really enjoying fishing out of this boat. Um, like I said, if you guys are interested, this is the XL, I think it's called a 1751 Viper or something like that. Yeah kind of the perfect little river rig, honestly. Just enough electronics to get me by, find a bunch of the fish, and today was just a perfect day. I couldn't really script up a much better one. Got to eat lunch on shore, caught a bunch of fish, snapping plastics around, I mean, it was a perfect day. So hopefully you guys kind of enjoyed watching this one. We had a lot of fun making it. Where are we gonna be next? Not really sure, but thank you guys for watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.